What's good, peeps? Good morning. All right, let's get straight into this. No chitty chatter. Um, I do need some nitrous oxide fuel first, though. <sighs> All right. Um, oh, there could be a live tomorrow. I could be doing a live um, around 7.30, 8 o'clock. Um, if I am going to do it, just check the community tab because I will leave information. You know, I always do like one hour left, five minutes left. Um, so, yeah, let's do a live tomorrow, possibly. I'm sort of 70, 30, just because I might have to do something tomorrow evening. But if I don't, we will be sitting on this green chair talking a lot of shit for about an hour. Um, yeah, what I want to do is kind of look forward to 2021. I think the last couple of lives have been about a particular fight and looking back on 2020. But I do think there are some good things to talk about for 2021. Um, some good fights coming up, some good fights being announced. So, yeah, we will possibly do the live. But again, just check the community tab um, for any further updates. All right. What have we got here? Um, I'm on Boxing Scenes website. So I'm just going to go through a couple of their stories and then we can kick on with our day. Um, BoxingScene.com is fighter of the year is Tifimo Lopez Jr. No arguments with that one. No arguments whatsoever. I think I've um, I've done my I've done my fight of the I think I've done a video. Yeah, I think I have surely. Um, and I said Tiafimo Lopez as well. I think the Ring magazine had Tiafimo and Tyson Fury. No argument with that. But for me, Tiafimo, man. I mean, to step up to the plate like that and get the job done, one hundred and ten percent. You know what I do love? I love, and I tweeted this out about an hour ago. I love the respect Mike Tyson's giving these young kids and the respect they're giving Mike back. Bear in mind, look, obviously they should know who Mike is, but none of these fighters were born when Mike was in his, was in his peak. Um, but I just love the fact that they're going on to Mike's shows and Mike's giving them the time of day. And what we saw with Ryan Garcia, Javante Davis and Mike a couple of days ago, Tiafimo Lopez and Mike. It's really, really, really good. He's literally giving them more promotion and push than their promoters are. I mean, they're doing it themselves. These young kids know how to promote themselves now, but he's really helping um, them grow. And, and I love it. I love what Mike's doing. I love what Mike's done the whole year, if I'm honest with you. I mean, last year. Um, how much hype did that fight with Roy Jones and those little clips come out? Mike is literally saving boxing right now. I'll say it again. Mike is doing more for boxing than a lot of fighters currently are doing for the sport. Honestly. I mean, I don't know if you guys watch his YouTube channel, Hot boxing, that's fantastic. Honestly, that is fantastic. The one where he had um, Evander Holyfield on was like really, really good. Some great insights. Some of the stories were fantastic. Um, wow. What a comeback from Mike Tyson. Like, it's been a few years, don't get me wrong, but there was a time when Mike was... Honestly, Mike was one of those people where 15 years ago, I wouldn't have been shocked if Mike was dead now. I know that might sound crazy, but that's where I thought Mike was going. And I have to be brutally honest with you. So his comeback is so refreshing and good to see. Um, yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. Fantastic story. All right. What stories have we got? Uh, Kubat Pulev was fighting COVID leading up to Joshua fight, says promoter. Here come the excuses. Um, I guess, look, this is a bit bigger than an excuse because... I don't know. I mean, obviously, COVID testing was done by all the fighters, right? All the fighters came back negative, so we're led to believe. I always say, especially if a fight of that magnitude, so not an undercard fight, which can easily get pulled, a fight of that magnitude, um, even if Co even if Pulev tested positive for COVID, that fight, I'm, I'm speaking out of turn here, but I think that fight still goes ahead. Yeah, I, I don't think you cancel a fight that big, if I'm honest with you. Um I really don't. I think it'll be a case of everyone just... <laughs> and let's just get this fight on, please. This is a pay-per-view fight. Anthony Joshua, let the fight happen. Um, so I'd like to know when, if his promoter is saying he was fighting COVID, when exactly he got COVID and when supposedly he no longer had it. Do you know what I mean? Uh, it'd be interesting to know. But I personally feel like even if he did have COVID and no symptoms, for example... That fight still goes ahead 100%. Um, it'll be good to see what Pulev does next, who Pulev is going to fight. Um, there are some... Look, it's the perfect time 
There is no better time in history, I don't think, to be a heavyweight boxer. I mean, you're getting guys out there making really good money that probably shouldn't be making really good money, if, if you know what I mean. So um, Kubert Pulev um, should start to cash in now. I mean, you, there are so many fights in and around the top 25 where you can make some decent money. Um, so it'll be good to see who he fights next. Um, Carl Froch views Joe Joyce as the next big threat at world level. He says that like Joe Joyce is a 24-year-old coming up. Um, but look, Joe Joyce is a threat. He's a good boxer, can take a punch, has a gas tank and a great jab. I mean, what they say, a great jab will take you around the world. He's got a great jab um, and he will continually throw that jab. So he, he's got a lot. He's a big, big guy in the land of the giants. He's one of them, right? He's a giant himself. He can take a punch. He's got a gas tank and a great jab. Those, those four things will take you a long way in the heavyweight division. I don't know if he's got the, the punch, but don't need to. I mean, if he consistently throws the jab and consistently lands a right, which might not be a detonating right, but it's a strong right, he is. But the thing is, again, with Joe Joyce, they're going to have to, and Sam knows this clearly, but you're going to have to fast track him a lot. But I think he's ready to be fast tracked now. Like he's ready to be in those fights with, I don't know, people might people might say this is a step back, but the Hergoviches of the world, Michael Huntley, he's ready to go into those fights and then, then jump to the next level. So he's there or thereabouts now. That was a good win over uh, Daniel Dubois. Very, very good win. Um, a bit more on Luke Campbell here talking about the Ryan Garcia fight. Right, Luke Campbell says, I think Ryan Garcia was asleep midair before woke him up. 100% that can happen. And 100% that probably is what happened, right? Um, I remember, oh, I'm going to forget the guy's name. Timothy Bradley. Fuck. Who was it he was fighting again? I can't remember his name. It's going to kill me. I can't bother to check right now. Timothy Bradley was fighting someone, got knocked down hard, bounced straight back up. Literally, his head hitting the canvas woke him up. That's going to bug me. It's going to bug me. It's going to bug me. I've got to get it. Sorry, peeps. Apologies, everyone. It's going to bug me. Um... It's not, some people might be thinking I'm talking about Provodnikov. No, it's not Provodnikov. This is a few years back before that. Um, some of you are shouting on the screen right now. I know some of you are shouting because you know the name. Um, who was Kendall Holt. Kendall Holt put him down. Kendall Holt was a good fighter, by the way. And it was, an, I think it was early as well. And honestly, it's a punch that would have put him to sleep. But him hitting the canvas woke his ass up. So uh, Luke could be right. Um, Teofimo Lopez versus George uh, Cambosos, Cambosos, I think is the pronunciation. Um, that fight's been ordered by the IBF. Um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. Teofimo's team, I think, have come out and said if they can't make that, then they will go Devin Haney route. We'll see about that. I don't think that will happen. But uh, George Cambosos is a good fighter. He's a decent fighter. I mean, we saw him against Lee Selby. Um, I actually spoke to Lee Selby's manager, um, and they still think they won that fight. I don't think they did. But um, Teofimo Lopez versus George Cambosos is a good fight. And it's the kind of fight I expect to happen. I know everyone's going to want to see Loma rematch and Javante, Devon, T all those kind of fights. This is a good matchup. And this is what I don't want. I don't want these guys to fight guys like this. And everyone's like, oh, this isn't what we want. That's a good fight in the lightweight division. A very good fight. Like if I was to do sort of... Um, a kind of a lightweight tournament, Cambosos would be in that tournament. He would be one of the eight. So it's a good matchup. And um, it's not an easy fight for Teofimo. It's, it really isn't. He's got to be up for it the way he was up for Loma. I expect him to win, but this is no, no gimme whatsoever. Mm. What else have we got here? What else do we have today? Uh, Klitschko's coach says Joshua must be physical with Fury. Avoid style used for Ruiz and Pulev. Said exactly the same thing. I said exactly the same thing. Um, by the way, that's Jonathan Banks, I believe, saying that. Um, yeah, he's got to be. He's got. He has to be a bit bigger. Like obviously, he was very light for the um, second Ruiz fight. Put a bit more size on for the Pulev fight, but quite light again. He has to be physical. He can't let Tyson Fury bully him. He can't, and he can't sit off as much. He's got to use his will and strength over Tyson Fury to get the job done. I, you know, I don't want to talk about Fury AJ anymore, if I'm honest with you, because I just want the fight to be announced or something. I, I, we need to see some movement in it. 
It's so weird. Like, Eddie Hearn, like, what was it, about seven months ago? Remember, it was all over Sky everywhere. Like, oh, we've agreed. Everything's been done. Do you remember this? Was it, is it just me? Where it was like, oh, terms have been agreed. It literally is just a case of a date or something. And now all of a sudden it's like, yeah, we're in negotiation. And I thought, I thought everything was done. I thought everything was done seven months ago. Promoters, man, just chat so much shizzle. Man, so much. Um, Adrian Broner versus Pedro Camper to headline uh, February 13th Showtime card. Who is that? Who is Pedro Camper? I don't know who that is. I'm guessing this is a fight at 140. So we'll look at Pedro Camper. And that's, that's a quick comeback for Adrian Broner, considering that a lot of people were saying he's severely out of shape about a month ago. Um, remember Clarissa Shields done that video saying he is a bit out of shape, but he's coming back. Um, Pedro Campa is, let's have a look at his record quickly, 31 and 1. Uh, all those 31, 21 knockouts. The loss has been, the loss was by knockout. Um, hasn't really, let's have a quick look at his record. Has he fought anyone of note? No, it hasn't fought anyone of note. Um, I don't know how much you guys take box Rex sort of rankings for, but according to box Rex, he's box Rex. Sorry, he's the seventy seventh best one hundred and forty pounder in the world. It's a very much comeback fight for Adrian Broner, but hey, let, let's just see Broner make the weight, which isn't going to be easy, and then we'll see what he can do. I've said already that Broner, as much as people say he's done, he's still the biggest draw, one hundred and forty. By a mile. Like, there's no one even close to that. Um, so, to be honest, if you're a Ramirez or a Josh Taylor, um, obviously we want to see Josh Taylor versus Ramirez get it on. That's the fight we want, the unification, undisputed fight. But if you're them, really and truly, you want to fight Broner after, because that's where the big money is. It's a big money fight. And Broner would want that fight as well, because it's a chance of becoming undisputed at 140. Although it's a... He's won belts at 140 before. So there could be something there for Broner and the winner of Josh Taylor Ramirez. But that's so far in the future. Um, anything else we've got here? Um, Luke Campbell, more. He must have done loads of interviews. He's saying that he believes Ryan Garcia beats Devin Haney, no problem. But that Javante Davis is a hard fight. This is it now. It's weird how, like, Ryan's now jumped above Devon just because we haven't seen Devon in there against someone. And we're not going to get those questions answered because he's fighting for Tuna. He needs a fight. Eddie Hearn needs to do something for Devon. It really does. I mean, if I'm Devon now, I'm on the phone to Eddie, like, can, can, you, can you give me someone? Because these boys are chatting a lot of, you know, right now, I've gone from everyone thinking it was me maybe as potentially the best 135 to everyone saying I'm, like, fourth. Maybe even fifth. So he needs a fight. In fact, definitely fifth. What am I saying? Maybe even. I mean, Ryan's got a win now. So Ryan, I don't think Ryan's better than him, but he's proof in the pudding, right? Ryan's had that win. So you've got Ryan, definitely. Javante's not really done nothing at 135, but Javante's got, you know, he's got a couple of solid wins there. Uh, Teofimo, and you've got to have Loma. You've got to have Loma above him. And boy, so he does need a win. Um... I saw something the other day about Rocky Fielding saying he wants to, um, what a segue, by the way, from Devon to Rocky Fielding. But Rocky Fielding saying he wants to come back. Remember, he had that fight against Canelo. Then he had a fight on an MTK card. Martin Murray was on that card as well. A few others were on that card. Quite a, quite a good card. Um, I think that was December 2019 or November. He hasn't fought since. Um, he wants to come back and fight at 168 or 175. He's 33 now. I don't know what he has left to offer, but we'll see. There was talk about him retiring. I know that for a fact. So maybe he's at a, a change of heart. Um, you know, you probably have a year off. You, like, get the hunger back. You, you, I don't know. Maybe he just decides to do that. Um, what's this? Teofimo Lopez. I don't understand this, still, honestly. I, I do. I, actually, I don't understand it at all. Teofimo Lopez rejects the idea of a Lomachenko rematch. Everybody was being a dick to me and my father. Get your emotion out of it, man. Young man, get your emotion out of it. You've got to have a rematch with Loma, no? Does Loma not deserve a rematch? I've seen some people have like, nah, don't fancy it. What? How can you not fancy to see, how can you not want to see 
Tiafima versus Loma again. I definitely want to see that fight. I mean, there was heat going into the first fight. This fight is going to be special. It's going to be really good. Um, I think Tiafimo knows it's a tough, tough fight, you know. He knows, like, rounds one to five, maybe six, super sharp. Seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Getting tired, he was getting caught a bit. Twelve, dug it out. But it's not an easy fight. It's not an easy fight. And unless he goes straight into a Javante fight, it's the biggest money fight in the division still for me, for him. I don't think Ryan yet, Devon, no. I think it's still Lomachenko. And it will be with a crowd there as well. Man, that's the fight you got to make. That's the fight you got to make. Uh, Callum Smith should move up to 175, says Eddie Hearn. Mm. Okay. I mean, let, let's see. Let's see what happens if he moves up. Obviously, there are some fights in the UK he can have. There are some fights um, abroad. Let, let's see. I'm, I'm kind of... Yeah, let's just see. Um, let's see what he does, man. Um... Virgil Ortiz versus Morris Hooker. I think that fight is done on March 27th, a couple of days after my birth. That's a good fight. It's a good fight for Virgil Ortiz, this one. He'll beat Morris Hooker. Um, I'm confident of it. And it's a good name. And it's um, it'll catapult him. Although Morris Hooker is a 140 fight, it will catapult him into the eyes of people. Just because, again, Morris Hooker will give him good rounds. It'll probably go points, but he'll get the win because Virgil Ortiz is that damn good. He really is. There was talk about Morris Hooker versus uh, Regis Progray. But I don't know what happened with that fight. I think something happened in terms of the weight or something. I'm not quite sure. Um, what else have we got here? I think. Okay, this is quite interesting. And we'll end on this one. Um, Demetrius Andrade, or Andrade, as people say, I always get it wrong, the pronunciation, has um, been gunning for Billy Joe Saunders for like the last couple of months. He, every, every time Billy Joe Saunders tweets, he retweets it, he's been tweeting, he's been making videos, he wants that fight. He doesn't want the Liam Williams fight just because it does nothing for him really. And I, I like Liam Williams, I think he gives um, Demetrius Andrade a good fight, but in terms of, like it'd be one of those fights where we, the British public, will say yeah. But then when you look at his resume, as we all do, we won't give him no credit for beating Liam Williams. We'll be like, oh, he beat, Nobody. That's that's how we work, don't we? So he's been gunning for the Billy Joe Saunders fight. Billy Joe Saunders obviously been gunning for the Canelo fight. So we haven't heard much from Billy Joe Saunders um, in the way of, okay, I'll fight you. Finally, for some weird reason, he's now saying he wants to fight. So now they're both saying they want it, which is strange. So much goes on behind the scenes in boxing. We have no idea. I thought Billy Joe Saunders was keeping quiet because Billy Joe Saunders knew he was getting a Canelo fight. So why engage? Um, with this social media beef, and that's kind of what it is, right, with Demetrius Andrade. But now, obviously, he's engaged, which says to me, and I'm probably doing two plus two and getting six here, but it says to me that something might have happened with the Canelo fight. Now, all of a sudden, Billy Joe is open to fighting Demetrius Andrade, I think. Um, look, it's not a fight that's going to be entertaining. I'll tell you that now. It isn't. It really isn't. It's going to be a spoiler and a boring fight. But... It's, um, it's a fight that should have happened twice. So maybe it's third time lucky. Um, same promoter. Same network in DAZN. Um, let's see. Let's see if it happens. Um, I, for one, hope it does. I, for one, hope that something happens in this 160, 168 division. There's so many fighters out there. And they should all somehow mix with each other. 160 to 168. Look, they, they all walk around at fucking probably 180. So they can all make the 160, 168 limit. So let, let's see what they do. And I wouldn't mind if it is Andrade, Billy Joe Saunders, just because of the press conference. I do think the fight will be a stinker, though. Peace and love.